In 1937, Nozomu Matsumoto, founder of Pioneer, finally succeeded in developing an ideal dynamic speaker. It was in Osaka where he had been devoting himself to the development of speakers in his pursuit of better sound. This speaker, named A8, is the forerunner of all Pioneer products. Nozomu combined the shape of the tuning fork, which symbolizes sound, with the sign of Ohm, which stands for electric resistance, to make a logo for the speaker A8. Furthermore, he placed the brand name Pioneer on the speaker and introduced it to the market. This was the birth of the Pioneer brand. Later on, an ambitious Nozomu moved to Tokyo, the capital of Japan. In 1938, he opened a small shop for repairing and manufacturing speakers and named it Fukuin Electric Works. He decided that January 1st of that year should be the foundation day for the company. In 1940, the company moved to another part of Tokyo called Otowa. The following year, he re-established his shop as a private company and continued his work specializing in speakers. Years passed and the Second World War, which left scars in numerous countries, finally came to an end. Radio broadcasting was a welcome diversion to the Japanese people who lost everything in the war. Even during the turmoil following the end of the war, Nozomu did not lose his passion for making speakers. He returned to his speaker business as soon as he was able to. In 1947, in order to expand its business, the company was incorporated as Fukuin Electric Works Limited and increased production of small site speakers for radios. In 1951, a great innovation took place in the Japanese record industry. Long play records, which had started to replace short play records, were manufactured domestically for the first time and introduced to the Japanese market. It was the advent of the age of LP records, which audio fans were long waiting for. This innovation opened the way for stereo sound and the further development of audio products. That same year, commercial radio broadcasting stations were established one after another. The steep increase in the demand for radio receivers caused an increase in demand for speakers as well, causing Pioneer to step up its production. In 1954, the National Broadcasting Corporation, Japan's only public broadcasting station, started stereo radio broadcasting by using two AM radio waves. In 1958, Fukuin Electric sponsored a stereo broadcasting program by using two commercial radio stations and won popular support. This is Stereo, the Pioneer Evening Stereo. ラジオは文化放送。右のラジオは日本放送。ハープの音が 
イオニアは音に挑戦し音を開拓して25年自然の中にあるどんなに微妙な音でもまた人の作り出すどんな音でも全て忠実に再現してあなたを美しい音の世界にお誘いしています音の専門メーカーパイオニアが今宵もお送りするステレオ音楽「パイオニアイーブニングステレオ」。In 1953, Fukui marketed the permanent speaker PE8, which received high evaluation and was considered a masterpiece among single cone speakers. PE8 was novel in that it used aluminum for voice coil and that the curve of its cone paper was specially designed. The speaker was said to be on a par with first class overseas products of those days in terms of both sound. And appearance. Fukuin Electric, which thus earned a good reputation for its hi fi speakers, started the manufacture of audio components in 1955. Starting with turntables, Pioneer progressed to the mass production of amplifiers, receivers, tuners, and speaker systems. The company, which was a part maker until that time, grew into a maker specializing in audio products, aiming to cover all items for the reproduction of sound. In order to supplement production at the Otoa plant, The Omori plant was constructed for the manufacture of amplifiers, and the Tokorozawa plant for the manufacture of speakers. The company's business and production scale both expanded steadily. In 1961, the company name was changed from Fukuin to Pioneer, the same name as the brand. Pioneer, which went public that same year, Was on its way to becoming a first class company. The Japanese society was also going through a considerable change. Post war Japan was recuperating rapidly, and people were making a better living. Young people were the leading power in changing the world. They appeared in movies and sang songs in concert halls. They brought an air of freedom and a new era. Television was broadcast on a nationwide scale. Since the TV set, Was far from the reach of the general consumer, crowds of people formed around sets placed in public areas for demonstration. By 1957, there were 43 commercial TV stations, besides the national broadcasting station. The Crown Prince Akihito's wedding was a breakthrough for television sales. Anxious to watch the wedding parade, people rushed to buy TV. With the spread of this product, TV commercials became popular. This is an old commercial produced during the transition period when Pioneer was changing from a maker of speakers to a maker of stereo sets. Pioneer の speaker が生まれる速さです。Pioneer はこのスピードで直径3センチ8ミリから80センチのスピーカーまで。月産120万個のスピーカーを生産これはアメリカが作り出すスピーカーの3分の1世界一の生産量ですパイオニアの高度な技術緻密な頭脳は自然な音贅沢な音を目指して前進アンププレーヤーを作りました
小さなネジ1本からキャビネットのデザインまで一つ一つ優秀な技術者の手を専門家の厳しい耳を経て作り出されますプレーヤーアンプスピーカーこの組み合わせでパイオニアのセパレートステレオが生まれましたセパレートステレオは3つのパートに分かれますお部屋に合わせてお好きな配置でお楽しみくださいステレオはパイオニア From the 1960s, the so-called ensemble stereo, which unified the speakers, receiver and turntable in a luxurious furniture style rack, became the main trend in the audio industry. However, Pioneer chose to introduce the so-called separate stereo, which kept the right and left speakers independent of the main body of the stereo. Because the speakers were separated, resonance was reduced to a minimum, making it possible to use high power amplifiers and large speakers. Pioneer's separate stereo approach was supported overwhelmingly by audio fans. Pioneer aimed to improve the sound quality as well as the functions of its separate stereo and soon developed the packaged component rack system. In 1974, Pioneer introduced the Project Series component rack system, which became a big hit due to its superior sound quality and easy usage. Project led the component rack system market for a long time to come. This commercial was broadcast during an age when hi-fi stereo sets were a symbol of luxury to the general public. クリアな音の世界に身を沈める。そこには充実した時がある。心を満たすパイオニアクリアサウンドIS。In March 1966, three years after it opened its U.S. office, Pioneer established its first overseas subsidiary, Pioneer Electronics USA, in order to make inroads into this vast market. Pioneer started to sell its own brand with its own subsidiary at the very home of audio products. That same year, Pioneer also established a sales subsidiary in Europe and expanded its business to the overseas markets, becoming the maker of the stereo of the world. By the mid-1970s, Pioneer had set up manufacturing facilities in Europe and in the United States in order to pursue the policy of making products at the place of consumption. As its overseas businesses expanded, Pioneer became active in overseas advertisements. This is as close to stereo realism as you can get. Pioneer's new SX9000 stereo receiver. Big power, up to 240 watts, and a built-in reverberation amplifier. Pioneer's SX9000 stereo receiver has everything. Hear it at your Pioneer dealer today. 
With the advent of the 1960s, television started progressing towards color broadcasting. In 1964, the Summer Olympic Games were held in Tokyo, and the event was broadcast in color. It was the first time that the Olympics took place in Asia. The whole country was fascinated by color broadcasting, and color TV rapidly made way into Japanese homes. Japan's roads were greatly improved on the occasion of the Tokyo Olympic Games, and the country entered the age of highway. Japan's automobile manufacturers gained strength, and high-quality domestic cars were introduced to the market, causing a boom for passenger cars. People learned the joy of driving. Pioneer had been exporting the four-track Fidelipak system car stereo to the United States since 1963. With the arrival of the automobile age in Japan, Pioneer became confident that car stereo will be a major business for the company and established a plant in Kawagoe City, Saitama Prefecture, for the manufacture of car stereo products. In 1975, Pioneer introduced a high-power component car stereo with superior performance and sound quality. These products enabled young people to set up a sound system of their choice in their car and established Pioneer's reputation for car stereo. I'm singing and driving Pioneer entered into the portable radio cassette player market in 1976. It introduced products which were not only easy to carry, but were excellent in sound quality, performance, and features thus satisfying the needs of the luxurious tastes of the young people. From the mid-1970s, the industry started moving towards multiplex TV broadcasting. Pioneer acted as a leading force in the electronics industry in its effort to gain approval for the National Broadcasting Corporation as well as Japan's commercial broadcasting stations. In September 1978, the National Broadcasting Corporation and six commercial TV stations were finally authorized for test broadcasting. Multiplex broadcasting immediately moved from the experimental stage to full-scale national broadcasting, and bilingual as well as stereophonic broadcasting were made possible in all areas of Japan. The pursuit of a high-quality picture combined with stereo sound was the impetus for the advent of today's audiovisual age.
新しいパイオニアプロジェクト ＡＶ ダブルセブン Even while the audio industry was experiencing rapid growth, Pioneer was thinking ahead. It was focusing its attention on the video disc, the product of the next generation. Although most people predicted that video cassette recorder will be the next major electronics product, Pioneer decided that it should pursue the laser optical video disc business. In 1977, Pioneer established the joint venture Universal Pioneer with MCA and took the first step toward the merchandising of the laser optical video disc player. There was much trial and error, but Pioneer's engineers joined their efforts in order to create a new era for electronics products. In 1978, Pioneer finally completed and introduced the optical video disc player, which was a result of outstanding achievements in ultra precise laser technology and electronic engineering. There were high expectations for this product. The optical video disc player was initially utilized in the industrial sector, but a consumer model was soon marketed in the United States. In October 1981, a consumer model was also introduced to the Japanese market under the name of LaserDisc. エノデルレコードレーザーディスクの時代に入ったパイオニアレーザーディスクプレイヤー LD1000 新登場家に帰るのが楽しくなった In the mid-70s, electronics technology began to progress at a remarkable pace. At this time, Pioneer developed and started in-house production of integrated circuits. Technological innovations changed people's lives, and the world of audio was no exception. Advancement in IC technology made way for smaller stereos while providing them with more features. In 1978, Pioneer preempted the industry by introducing the Mini Component series. The Mini Components allowed young people to always have a high quality sound system nearby. This series became highly popular, especially among young people living in urban areas. In the 1980s, Pioneer named its Mini Component series Private and continued to improve its performance as the model number was increased. Young people started to place high quality compact stereos in their own rooms. Thus, the stereo set moved from the living room to the bedroom. The private series which became a great hit, led the mini component market throughout the 1980s. Oh, 
たい時にワンタッチ聴きたい時をプログラムマイルームとマイタイムを追求した奥行き2 1センチのパイオニアプライベート Changed its slogan from Stereo of the World to the Future of Sound and Vision, thus declaring to the world that it was on its way to the new audio video age with the laser disc as its nucleus. The announcement of the new slogan coincided with the introduction of the second generation laser disc player, which used a small, solid state laser for its pickup. Instead of helium neon gas type laser, which had been used in former models. The new generation laser disc players were more compact, superior in performance, and lower in price. Combination players, which are capable of playing both compact disc and laser disc software, Were developed. Reproduction of digital sound on LaserDisc was also made possible. Within a very short period, the number of LaserDisc player models increased greatly so that consumers were able to choose the hardware to meet their needs. In 1986, Pioneer concentrated. The essence of LaserDisc technology in the prestige model it introduced to the Japanese market. As LaserDisc players improved, disc titles increased. In 1981, Pioneer established LaserDisc Corporation, a subsidiary in Japan for the planning and production of LaserDiscs. There were only 70 titles. When the LaserDisc player was launched in Japan, but the number increased steadily. In 1979, Universal Pioneer established a plant for the manufacture of LaserDisc software in Kobu City, Yamanashi Prefecture. Preparations were underway for mass production. Universal Pioneer. Later changed its name to Pioneer Video Corporation and expanded its facilities for disc production. With top level technology and extensive quality control, Pioneer Video now boasts a production capacity of 1.2 million discs per month. Years passed since the LaserDisc was introduced in Japan. Pioneer was initially the only marketer of the laser optical video disc system, but in time the company won many supporters. One after another, hardware and software companies joined the Laser Vision Association Pacific, an organization for the penetration and promotion of the laser vision system. The party celebrating the fifth anniversary of the introduction of the laser disc in Japan. Was filled with enthusiastic members of the association. Pioneer had overcome the hardships of introducing a completely new product to the market. In order to meet the growing needs of the rapid development of the so called new media software, Pioneer introduced the high picture quality large screen TV monitor in 1983. Large screen TV monitors with high picture and sound quality were used extensively in the Tsukuba Exposition of Science and Technology, which was held in 1985. The dynamic sound and vision of the giant screens, which played a major role in many of the pavilions, were supported by 150 laser disc players interfaced with computers. Pioneer keeps improving its line of audio video products. 
it succeeded in developing a large screen projection TV with excellent brilliance and resolution, challenging the notion that projection TVs suffered from dim, vague pictures. In the meantime, the LaserDisc system, with its multiple features and versatility, found applications in numerous areas. The Laser Karaoke, or the LaserDisc sing-along system, became immensely popular all over Japan. Laser jukeboxes were placed in cafes and bars to entertain young people with its dynamic sound and video. The laser disc, because of its random access feature, came to be widely used in the industrial sector for exhibitions and information centers and also became a powerful tool for sales promotion. The LaserDisc, which is capable of storing and reproducing up to 54,000 still pictures on one side, is also being used as a filing device. Since the pickup of the LaserDisc is a non-contact type, the disc has strong resistance against external hazards and can be viewed repeatedly without wear, making it an ideal tool for industrial use. LaserDisc software utilizing the random access feature also increased in number, and the applications for the system are expanding continuously. In 1982, the world of audio finally entered the digital age with the introduction of the compact disc. This was indeed a revolutionary event in the audio industry. Pioneer, which was ahead of other makers in digital and laser technology, introduced new products one after another. For example, digital-ready amplifiers and synthesizer tuners were developed through Pioneer's top-level digital technology. The Multiplay Type CD player which is capable of playing six discs, either consecutively or at random, was an innovative product which allowed for greater enjoyment of compact discs and which was another proof of Pioneer's outstanding originality. Taking advantage of its know-how in the manufacture of laser disc software, Pioneer Video started production of compact disc software. In record stores, sales area for CDs expanded rapidly, and it was not long before CDs overpowered LPs in the record industry. Electronics and digital technology also swept through the world of car audio. In 1984, Pioneer introduced the world's first car CD player. Challenging the rigorous conditions of the car, such as its strong vibration and rapidly changing temperature, Pioneer succeeded in developing a multi-play type car CD player whose magazine can also be used in a multi-play type CD player for the home. Young people can now switch from one music source to another in the car as well as at home with the touch of a finger. At night, Pioneer's digital display adds color to the interior of the car. With the advent of digital sound, the scope of entertainment for car audio expanded dramatically.
ことの最前列へ新世代カーオーディオカロッツェリア誕生ヒューマンハイテクノロジー思想に貫かれた人に優しい先進のカーコンポーネント新しいカーオーディオライフが始まるパイオニアエクストラカーコンポーネントカロッツェリア新登場今夢の隣に着座する上がってんのちょっとちょっとあのね航空車ポーズってのはね、はいはい、もう自然にこうやってればいい自然の中でスッと止めて何もない瞬間ねちょちょっと新平ちゃんも長いコンビだからさ20年ぐらい違うそんな関係じゃないのよそんな関係じゃないのそうじゃないのよ<笑>お仕事も三年ぐらいつけてる。スッと行ってそう。スッとほらほら。<笑>スッとこうして自然に行きゃいい。スッとポーズってこれだけじゃないでしょ。大胆なのを取ったらどう？例えばこうやってさ、クッと上げるとかさ、こんなの最高だと思わない？ね。<笑>あれ？いなくなったわね。<笑>今夜は最高。この番組は世界のステレオパイオニアの提供でお送りしますす僕とあの子のハートがミキシングできたらな震えてしまったバイブレーションパイオニアバイブレーション This TV program sponsored by Pioneer Started broadcasting in the spring of 1981. The show, which is filled with music and comic acts, has proven to be highly popular with Japanese viewers. Top class Japanese actors, actresses, singers, and other celebrities have participated as guests in this program, which has won numerous awards in the Japanese TV industry. ここのの番組は音と光の未来を開くバイオニアの提供でお送りしました。大画面は質感表現力の時代ですパイオニアシード29プロ X 新登場 In 1986, CDV was introduced to the market CDV is a 5 inch disc capable of incorporating a maximum of 5 minutes of video and 20 minutes of music The Golden Disc expanded the application of the optical system. Pioneer was quick to start production of CDV software, as well as players capable of playing the CDV. Pioneer continued to improve its audio components, adopting the technology of its own prestige model. Called the exclusive series in Japan. With the introduction of digital technology, more and more features were added to components. Pioneer's video components 
which started from the development of the LaserDisc player, increased in reliability as production was improved. With the combined power of Pioneer's technology in audio and video, the company's audio-video products developed dramatically in the 1980s. In 1987, Pioneer introduced the digital audio tape player known as DAT. Pioneer's digital technology, as well as audio technology, were utilized fully in this novel product which made digital recording and reproduction possible for consumers. Pioneer's audio-video components are playing a leading role in the present age of the multimedia. The 1980s also saw the planning and implementation of cable TV in Japan's large and mid-sized cities. Pioneer was ahead of the times in this area. Together with Warner Cable, it developed the two-way cable television system and introduced it in Columbus, Ohio in 1977. In 1980, Pioneer developed the world's first two-way cable TV system for hotel use for the Hotel New Otani in Tokyo. Through these activities, the company steadily accumulated the technical expertise required for the impending age of information. The broadcasting satellite was launched in 1984 and started sending signals from 36,000 kilometers above the Earth. The clear image and digital sound of broadcasting satellite was more than impressive. It marked the advent of a new age for broadcasting. The broadcasting satellite offers the Japanese people news and information from all parts of the world around the clock. Equipment for retrieving various types of information is placed in shopping malls and other parts of the city. Technical innovations changed the world to an amazing degree during the past decade. It may be said that we are right in the midst of the audio-video age.朝コンパクトディスクでアルバム昼、CD、ブイでアタラシーヤツを2曲。夜、レーザーディスクで映画1本。レーザーディスクもコンパクトディスクもCDブイもこれ1台で。パイオニアコンパチブルプレイヤー
Pioneer is currently developing erasable disks for the next generation of office automation equipment. Pioneer, which started out as a maker specializing in the manufacture of speakers, developed into a multinational company, bringing the pleasures of audio and video to all parts of the world. Ever since it was established 50 years ago, Pioneer has been a leader in facing the challenges of the times. Science and technology are advancing at an incredible rate and our daily environment is changing rapidly. Leading the way in sound and vision, Pioneer is steadily progressing towards the 21st century. In 1988, Pioneer sponsored the 10th Paris-Dakar Rally as one of the projects commemorating the 50th anniversary. The rally, which is known to be one of the world's last great adventures, started from Versailles, France on January 1, 1988 to go through approximately 8,000 miles of desert and bush to reach the goal of Dakar, Senegal's capital, in three weeks. The rally's starting date coincided with Pioneer's Foundation Day. But it was not only that. Pioneer felt a strong empathy with the challenging spirit of the Paris-Dakar rally, a spirit that Pioneer itself had valued and nurtured for a long time. 600 cars, trucks, and motorcycles from all over the world participated in the rally and challenged the hazards of Africa's desert land. The rally, officially called the 10th Pioneer Paris Alger Dakar, highlighted the company's multinationality together with its firm belief in the spirit of challenge.